Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. As you can see from the title above, I have a Bible review for you guys. And I'm actually excited to share this Bible with you guys. Um, it's very pretty, but at the same time, I don't think it's a necessity. Um, it's one of those Bibles that if you have the, the money to buy it and if you think it would be useful as a reference, I would recommend you buy it. But um, it's not like a must-have Bible in my opinion. I did receive this Bible for free for review from Crossway through their blogging program. I will leave a link down below for those of you who are interested in signing up. And yeah, they sent me this. So like I said, this is the ESB Prayer Bible. And I just really love the design. I am loving this cloth navy blue leather with the gold foil on top of that. Really pretty all around. Um, there is no dust jacket, but it comes with this kind of like half size or not half size uh this one third size kind of jacket that um just has some illustrations of the people who write prayers within this bible and yes this bible does consist of prayers it's similar to the pray the scriptures bible but it's also different at the same time um so yeah like i said it's the esv translation from crossway so on the back it says the esv prayer Prayer Bible was created to help readers reflect on God's word through prayer. With over 400 historical prayers linked to specific passages throughout the biblical text, this Bible edition shows God's people how to pray using scripture as their guide alongside Augustine, John Calvin, George Whit Whitefield, Whitefields, and other Christians from church history. This does retail for $30. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but it does retail for $30. You can get this on Amazon for $27. And if you go to christianbook.com, you can snag it for $20. Um, so let's dive in. So it tells you how this Bible is set up. It's single column text, 400 plus historical prayers, introductory essay by Professor Donald S. Whitney, prayer focus book introductions that provide insight, author index, as well as a comprehensive comprehensive index um, for all the prayers and their references. So I do love the end pages. I love the gold um, sort of metallic feel that it gives off. Really nice. Even on this side, it's just really pretty. I think this would be great if you're into like decorating the inside cover of your Bibles and making them personal. This would be like really awesome. But um, yeah. And then there's a bunch of white pages on the front, which is which I think is great for doing some notes. Here's your presentation page, which is obviously presented to by and on. I personally like those kind of um, pages. I use them for myself just to mark when I got the Bible, but I don't remember when. So yeah. ESV Prayer Bible. Skipping pages. <laughs> then you get your copyright page here. And then you go into your table of contents. So the Old Testament, New Testament, which we all know all the Bibles have. As well as your resources. So here is an introduction to the ESV Prayer Bible. It talks about increasing in the knowledge of God. How the Bible and prayer go hand in hand. The problem with prayer, the solution, and how to pray the Bible and um, who has prayed the Bible. So this is that sort of article from Donald S. Whitney, who's a professor. Here's a user guide. So again, there are texts of nearly 400 prayers. Um, there's a reading plan and a prayer index towards the back. Uh, there's an author index as well, book introductions, and a comprehensive scripture index. Your preface for the ESV translation. Then the ASV features, so your section headings, cross-reference system, textual footnotes, and things like that. And then you dive directly into the Old Testament. So here is the book of Genesis. So like they said, there is introductory information concerning prayer. So this would be that little section here, this paragraph, and then you get into your actual text. Um, there are footnotes towards the bottom. Not a lot of space for journaling if you're into micro um, if you're into Bible journaling. But if you're in want to if you want to try micro Bible journaling, and I will leave a link 
Um, you can just click the eye on the screen to see what I mean when I say micro Bible journaling because I've seen some people do that before. This would be a good one to use. Um, so, yeah. So, prayers are all throughout this Bible. As you can see here, you have one for um, Genesis 1, verses 28 to 31, and it's by Thomas Beacon. Then for uh, the fall for Genesis 3, 1 through 7, you have one by Gregory of... can't pronounce that. I'm not going to attempt. But yeah, this basically has Bibles, Bibles. It has prayers thrown all throughout. Um, and like I said, it is single column text. All of the pages will not have a prayer specifically. But, um, you know, that's perfectly fine. Not everything in the, in the Bible is something you should be praying over yourself, <laughs> if that makes sense. But here's another one here by John Bradford. Um, Henry Wetherspoon. I don't know how to pronounce that. John Calvin right here for Genesis 16 and I just I like how they have it thrown in between the verses that it you know align with so you would read okay so here's God rescues Lot so you would read Genesis 19 verses 1 through 22 and then from here you have another prayer from John Thomas Beacon that's about 15 to 22 and that's this paragraph right here so I like that they have them aligned properly Here is another one. This is by Charles Spurgeon. This would be for Exodus 15, verses 19 to 27. And it just says, We are like Israel of old, a fickle people, and we confess it with great shame. There are days when we take the timbrel, yeah, the timbrel, and we sing with Miriam unto the Lord who triumphed gloriously. And yet we grieve to say it not many hours after. We are thirsty, and we cry for water, and we murmur in our tents. And, you know, I, I just, I love the, the power behind the prayers, if that makes sense, that are within this Bible. So, moving on, there's Judges, again, that single column text with the small space, but it's great for uh, micro Bible journaling. I don't know why that stuck together, okay. Moving on to the Psalms, again, you get your book introduction, and um, the Psalms, you get a little bit more space to journal in, but again, this would also, again, be like micro journaling, if you will. Um, and then you have your single ribbon satin bookmark, and it's really nice. I like the color of it. It just really is nice. I wish it was thicker, but it's still a nice one. Then we dive into the New Testament. So here is Matthew, and again, you have that introductory kind of uh, paragraph here about the book. This is not red letter text because the ESV does not do red letter text. I wish that they would. I would love it so much if they did. So here we go. We have um, John, obviously, I love John. And this one is for John chapter 1, verses 29 to 34, which is all about beholding the Lamb of God. If you guys can see, behold the Lamb of God, that's what this uh, prayer goes to. And it's by William J. It says, help us to consider the way, the new and living way, in which a fallen creature can approach you with acceptance. May we behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. May we contemplate the dignity of his person, the perfection of his sacrifice, in the efficacy efficiency is I, th I probably should say efficiency but the efficacy of his intercession who is the great high priest over the house of god and may we feel the distance between you and us done away and rejoice that now in christ jesus we who at one time were afar off are made nigh by the blood of christ and obviously we say amen at the end but that's a really beautiful prayer here's another one by charles bergen this has to do with um john 8 verses 31 to 38 which is about the truth setting you free so he says now lord our prayer is to you at the mention of your sacred book that you would write it upon the fleshly tablet of tablets of our heart more fully we want to know the truth that the truth may make us free we want to feel the truth that we may be sanctified by it oh let it be in us a living seed which shall produce in us life acceptable before god a life which shall be seen in everything that we do unto the living god for we remember that you are not the god of the dead but of the living and again that is from charles spurgeon so like i said i enjoy the prayers throughout this bible they're really really beneficial 
Um, here we have another one from John Calvin. This is for Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 to 20, which talks about the certainty of God's promise. I'm not going to read it, but it's there and it's really beautiful. And then after Revelation, you have your resource section. So you have your table of weights and measures and monetary units, you know, the, the, the basic stuff that you normally see. Then you get your author index, which talks about each of the, uh, uh, basically the writers of the prayer. So here are some of them here. You have Jane Austen, the writer of sentences. You all know who Jane Austen is, right? So I know about Jane Austen. I know about Augustine. Um, I know about John Calvin, who doesn't. <laughs> Here you have the next page, Clement, Clement of Rome, Lady Jane Grey. A lot of these people I do not know. So, yeah. <laughs> John Newton, I know of. I've heard you have another woman, Ann Judson, or Judson, John Hunter, Martin Luther. So these are all of the writers of the prayers within this Bible. And I like that they have... Um, it's mainly a lot of men, but they do include a few women in their prayers, which I think is phenomenal to do. So you have that John Wesley, obviously Charles Bergen is, of course, in this as well. But then you go into your prayer index, which basically just points out the prayers written within each of the chapters and books in the Bible. So this is all of Genesis. And then you have Exodus, Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Numbers, and all of that. So that's what that is. You can easily just go, if you're looking for a specific prayer, for a specific scripture, you can come to this section to look. Then you have your comprehensive scripture index. And it says, this index lists the prayers and references to prayer in every book of the Bible, allowing the reader to glimpse the way in which prayer features in each book. So pretty much it just has the, um, what is it called? The prayer index, but done in scripture form if that makes sense so you can go directly to the scripture instead of looking through here to see if the scripture is there if that makes sense if the prayer is there then you have your esv concordance and it's a nice size concordance i love me a good concordance font is extremely tiny but what font in a in a concordance is not so it's a nice size you then get your reading plan for the year, so it's a yearly reading plan in which you would read an Old Testament, a Psalms, and a New Testament, or you would read an Old Testament, Proverbs, and a uh, New Testament. No, actually you wouldn't. You would just read uh, Old Testament, a Psalm, and a New Testament. Hmm. That's quite interesting to me. I'm just trying to see if they have Proverbs within, yeah, okay, that's by, because Proverbs is put within the Old Testament. So yeah, you have the Old Testament, Psalm, and the New Testament. And then it just ends with those pages again, which again, is great for notes, jotting down sermons, and it ends with that pretty metallic end page. But, um, my thoughts, I think this is a really nice Bible. Is it a necessity? Of course not, um, it definitely is it. But for someone who is looking to get more into prayer, who likes prayer prompts like myself, um, this would be great to just really get you comfortable with speaking prayers out. I think um, using this alongside your other Bibles would be great. You can do your Bible study, and then if you're confused about a scripture or a scripture sticks out at you, you can come to this Bible, see if there's a prayer for it. And if there is, you can say that prayer and then add on to that prayer. Um, but yeah, this I think is useful, but it is not a necessity to own. Um, I would, I would recommend it if you're trying to build on your prayer life. Um, but again, you can grab this on Amazon. It's twenty seven dollars, or you can go to ChristianBook.com and get it for twenty bucks. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching this video. Subscribe if you aren't subscribed. Like this video. Click the little bell to stay tuned. Um, and just keep up with all the notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!